Dan had taken Spano to his place. I wanted to believe that when Randall Lee broke into the apartment, Spano fled to his former address. But where could okay. that be? So wait, you want me to make a deduction while I'm driving the car? Come on, bro. Okay, fine. Um, Let me see. Huh. Okay, so I see some new ones here. The biography of Harry Bradwick, father of baseball at Dunn's apartment. Craig Spano was an orphan who thought baseball was his only family. Before Dunn found him, Spano was living with his father. Okay. Um. Nice. Wow, am I at some sort of a cemetery? Oh my goodness, this is the last place I want to be. You know how many if the crazy living have rich and poor neighborhoods, so do the dead. You know how, how much crazy shit happens in basements and cemeteries? In the I don't want to be here. Century, Greenwood became the resting place to the city's most distinguished citizens. Thinkers, Black scientists, writers, inventors, artists, businessmen, politicians, police officers, thieves, pimps, and murderers. Black Sad, you really are climbing, huh? Oh, Black Sad, I hope you know what you're doing because. Here lie the bodies of the soulless minds that raised New York from the ground up. Oh, I do not want to be here. Now you Seriously. know where to go to become somebody in the Big Apple. Mmm, okay. Oh, I really wish I wasn't here. I'm not a fan of cemeteries. I'm really not. I know, I know, there's no zombies popping out the grounds, but it's just, I don't know. Crazy stuff happens at cemeteries, we all know this. And yet I'm here, being nosy. And you know what happens to cats? Curiosity killed the cat, Black Sad. And yeah, here we are, being curious. For what? I don't even know what I'm looking for. Oh. Okay. The four bases guarding their father. Wait, that's the... Oh wow, that's a really interesting gravestone. I know that costs mad money to make. I mean, and, you know, to buy. According to the book I found at Dunn's place, fans of the sport leave baseballs on Bradwick's tomb to pay their respects. Oh, that's cute. In memoriam Harry Bradwick, father of baseball, born on October 5th, 1824, died on... Whatever, I guess it's not important enough for me to finish reading. Bye. Jenny Boots, wife to Harry Bradwick, born on July 24th, 1819, died on May 13th, 1915. A couple years after the sinking of Titanic. Sweet. Very interesting. What am I looking for, though? Ooh, what's this? Is that Chinese food? Leftover Chinese food? Still hot. Someone's been here. Question is, are they still here? And also, who wastes Chinese food like that, bro? Come on. I would do anything for a nice, juicy plate of Chinese food, bro. I have been, you know, changing up my diet for the past couple weeks, trying to lose some pounds. So... Chinese food has always been a weak spot in my heart. But you know what? If this had been here over 30 minutes, it'd be covered in ants. 
I'm a... I'm gonna just behave myself for a little bit. But yeah, listen. Someone's in the cemetery. Someone's been here. I don't know what they were doing. Well, besides eating, of course, but still. Someone's here. Question is, where are they now? Ooh, another card! Yes! I love collecting these cards. I feel like one of those kids that collects the bubble wrap comics that you find between the gums. You know, I'm not gonna lie though, this is strangely peaceful. What's this? A Celtic cross. Supposedly, the ring keeps the devil at bay by reflecting the sunlight. Really handy at this time of the day. Intriguing. Another card! Yeah, yeah. And a baseball? Hmm. Wow, Black Sad, you're mad dirty for that shit, bro. How are you gonna go take someone's stuff and just put it in your pocket? Obviously, the dead person is not gonna be able to use said baseball, but still. Bro, that's bad juju right there. Do you not understand the concept of bad juju? Is there anything for me to click on in this area? Because I just don't see anything interesting. Nothing? I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the moon against the sky. I love seeing the stars. The same stars that I see on my work wife's face with her cute little freckles. But still! What am I supposed to look at? What am I supposed to find? And yes, I'm still mad about the person leaving Chinese food on the floor. Like, next time, if you're not gonna eat it, give it to me. Shit, I'll eat it. You know what, Chinese food, I love eating though. If I'm going to the buffet, I'm all about the sushi, the calamari, the shrimp, all the seafood stuff. But if I'm just gonna go to a regular old Chinese food spot, Joe Tao's chicken with some pork fried rice and an egg roll. That beauty in itself. I love it. No, but seriously, what am I supposed to do here? I don't get it. Can I just leave or nah? No? I'm lost, bro. I don't even know what I'm doing at all. Maybe that is the mystery of it. Sometimes some mysteries are not meant to be solved. Right? I don't know. Seriously, though, what am I supposed to do here? Oh! All that for a card? Come on! It can't be, it can't be that. It can't only be that. Come on. You mean to tell me I can't walk through the bushes? I see another gravestone there. Let me walk through. Yo, this game. Mm -mm. This game is really going to get the best of me, I swear. How am I supposed to get through here? I don't understand. Yo, I need help. I've never trusted angels. When they fall... Wow, really? He's so cliche. But then again, he is romantic. The world falls with them. Who's there? Oh, <gasps> the chapstick! It's the same person who didn't finish their Chinese food. Bro, do you really want to touch that? What if they just chewed on that? Are you really gonna stare at that? Wait a minute! Someone's in there! Who is it? 
Oh, it's the it's this guy. He's been hiding up there the whole time, really, bro. That is so cute. And I'm over here trying to figure out what's going on. Where is this person at? And he's been right above me this whole time. That is so cute. And look at Black Sad. He is so smugged. That this guy is doing all that work just to not be seen. Are you gonna throw the ball at him? That would be so funny. Oof. I've always been a New York Warriors fan. Although, to be honest, they're not what they used to be. Yep, they just haven't been the same without Craig Spano. Joe Dunn met with someone at the diner close to his gym. Then he took that person to his house so that he didn't have to live at the cemetery. I would have never guessed the person's identity. Which leads I me to this one. I found a baseball glove at Joe Dunn's place. A glove signed by a great star. I couldn't believe my luck. Oh. Now he wants to respond. Psst. Yeah. <laughs> Me? Thank you. I'm like, come on. <laughs> what, the cigarette too? Greedy ass. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. <coughs> You're welcome. Oh, these uh, are the absolute worst. Come now. Just want to talk. I'm here all night. I really don't care. Who are you? I'm John Blackside, private investigator. How's Joe? One question at a time. It's my turn. And now we're Your playing turn. catch? Okay, that's cute. Why did you meet with Joe Dunn? Because he was looking for me. He came here one morning, but I was uh, too embarrassed to come down because he left a baseball with his initials on on by the tombstone. Uh, uh, Sam uh, 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 tomorrow. Stop stuttering. 12.30 a.m. Because he, he knew they want to kill me. What did he want from you? And who wants to kill you? One question at a time. Okay, fine. How's Joe? What would happen if I told him the truth? Would he lose it? Could I take that chance? Fuck it. Joe Dunn is dead. Murdered. I told you, Joe. How did it happen? One question at a time. My turn. Yep, gotta keep you on your toes, big boy. Uh... What did Dunn want from you? He wanted to know who was playing dirty in the sporting business. Dirtier than usual, that is. Wrecked lives, careers, ruined at the top of the game. He wanted to know if the same had happened to me. He wanted to know if the end of my career and my disappearance had anything to do with all that. He wanted me to confirm who was behind it all. The guy who had him killed. Our old friend, the surgeon. Interesting. I love getting new clues. Now, the surgeon. Who could be... Okay, let me go through a couple of these. O'Leary personally kills anyone who threatens his family or business. 
Spano blames everything on the surgeon, an old friend in common with Dunn. Michael, one of the Olympic Five, tried to pass off as Yale's doctor. Huh. During the war, Dunn and his pals were known as the Olympic Five. One of Dunn's brothers in arms tried to pass as Yale's doctor. No, okay. Um, bingo. Is Mitchell the surgeon? Is he the person behind all of this? That surgeon you mentioned, is he? My turn. Okay. I want to know why I should trust you. Oh, damn, there's a lot of options here. Um, right here. Do it for Joe Dunn, our common friend. It's my turn. That surgeon that you mentioned, is he in this photo I got here? Ow! What hey. the hell? Why did you throw it at my head, bro? Uh, Don't tell me he dipped. Hey, that toss was... Great. He dipped. Both my ear and my self-esteem would hurt for days. But at least I had a new lead to follow. The surgeon. The bastard had avoided my scrutiny by passing as a hospital doctor. But now, all of my senses were on guard. No matter how good the disguise or how well he hid, I would find him. So, what you're saying is, one, there's a corruption scandal involving all kinds of athletes. Yep. Two, our puppet master is a surgeon named Mitchell, a man who happened to fight in the war with Dunn, right? Yep. Yep. Yep, yep. Every lead I've found points to him. Anyway, where was I? Number three, right? Three, since Dunn was on his trail, Mitchell hired an anteater to get rid of him. That's a good, that's a good deduction then, right since there. since you were also shaking the wasp's nest, he went after you. But the anteater made a mistake, and Mitchell killed him to cover his own tracks. And, wait, four. The key to all this lies with a common friend of Dunn's and Mitchell's, Sparrow. Craig Spenno. Do you really trust him? I think everything he said was true. It adds up and confirms everything I've found so far. Four. No, I mean, five. Yeah. Dunn was murdered five, I mean, four days after taking Spenno to his house. If that doesn't make him suspect, makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, it could make sense. Ha! <laughs> Who's the detective now? Cut it out. Let's follow up with the suspects. You told Smirnoff you're convinced that Yale is innocent. But what about O'Leary? Mm. Um, six. O'Leary, okay. So, let me see. Okay, what should I do though? Hold on. Someone ordered Randall Lee to commit those murders, so... But O'Leary personally kills anyone who threatens his family or business. Oh. O'Leary wouldn't have sent Randall to kill Dunn. He would have dragged him to his basement, given him his little speech, and then killed him himself. Exactly. O'Leary is very proactive. No, I know O'Leary. And he wouldn't have sent a hitman. He would have nope. taken matters into his own hands. Exactly. What about Cassidy? Seven, right? Cassidy. Hmm. Cassidy, Cassidy, Cassidy. Cassidy acts recklessly by impulse. Wow, I I'm good. I think it's safe to rule out Cassidy as Dunn's murderer. 
He seems too impulsive to have planned such a twisted crime. Exactly. Whoever planned the whole thing knew the suicide theory would fall through. So he manipulated the clues to incriminate Yale. Cassidy is too impulsive to pull off such an intricate plan. So you're right. Mitchell is the one pulling the strings. And you know why? Why? Because in novels, the murderer is always someone the detective knows from the beginning. Well, that could be the case in British novels. You know, where everyone in the mansion where the murder took place is a suspect. But this might just be an American who done it, where the detective doesn't even meet the culprit until the last scene. You mean we still don't know who's pulling the strings? I didn't say that. How did it go with Helen Moore? Uh, I didn't get anything. Even though it started out really well, I asked to interview her along with her boyfriend, Al Stone. Since I'm a big shot, they were happy to oblige. Okay. Perfect. Now, time for the interview. I'll go back and forth so you don't get bored. So, who goes first? Dude, that's a cool ass jacket. Let's ask Al. Here's a question for Al. Mm, this one. In just 12 days, the contender will try to steal your belt. Any thoughts on your fight against Yale? Uh, yeah, sure. My Al is going to kick that thug's behind. Isn't that so, honey? Yeah, well, we'll see. No such thing as a weak rival. Nonsense. You are and will be world champion. Next question. Okay, uh, now. So, Helen. Here's one for Helen. Uh, this one. Dating a boxer can be dangerous. Aren't you afraid that those blows to the head will take a toll on his intellectual capacity? Honey, take a look at my man and then look at yourself. You really think I'm with him because of his intellectual capacity? That's Helen. fucked up, Helen. Write this down. Nothing will change my man. His smarts, manliness, and integrity are all boxing proof. Moving on. Helen is so superficial. So, Al. Are you ever jealous about sharing your sweetheart with America? Uh, yeah, I, uh... Nonsense. America has my smile, my figure, and my patriotic... Look. Why are you answering for him? I'm asking everything Al. Everything else, and I mean everything, belongs to Al. Right, baby? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, I can now see what? who wears the pants in this relationship. Okay, Helen. Can you tell us how much Champies pays you to endorse them? Sure, honey. They pay me much more than I'd ask them for. In fact, Champies is so delightfully delicious that I'd even do it for free. Does that answer your question? Uh, no. Nonsense. We both know it does. Okay, one more question, and... Wait, <sighs> who's that? Al, honey, can you answer it? I've got to go say hi to a fan. <laughs> I'll be right back, Mr. Pulitzer. <laughs> Wait. You mean she stopped smiling when that fan showed up? Uh, yeah. Could you describe him for me? I'll be able to show you something as soon as I'm done developing these pictures. And actually, I thought it was odd, too. So while I continued to interview Stone, I managed to take some pictures of Moore and whoever her mysterious fan was. I can't wait to see the pictures, honestly. Hmm. All right. So, uh, where were we? Uh, this one. Your manager is Frank Cassidy, president of the Boxing Managers Association of New York. According to him, only boxers working with member managers should be allowed to compete. What do you think about that? Cassidy is a great manager, really. No complaints there. And the work he's putting in as president of the association is really valuable. But, I don't know, maybe in this case, Joe Dunn was right. Wait, no. 
Could you keep that last comment uh, off the record? You know, on the down low. My lips are sealed. That is so cute. Um. Let's get that picture taken. Uh. Okay, now raise your head and your arms up like you were celebrating a victory. Like this? Exactly. Okay, that's cute. So, take a picture. Wait, I, I accidentally moved. Stand still. I'll take another one. And then... Yep. What's with me today? Don't move, please. All right, so another picture, yeah? Or should I do... Damn, I really don't know what I'm doing. Okay. What am I... What am I supposed to be doing? I'm having a brain for it here. Okay. Now we got it. There Should we go. keep at it? In just 12 days, the contender will try to steal your belt. Any thoughts on your fight against Yale? Well, supposedly the odds are in my favor, but there's no such thing as a weak rival. And, you know, Bobby Yale might be young and going through a rough patch, but he's had a, an amazing streak, so... I'll do my best. Oh my god, okay, that's a nice quote. He's he's a very good, you know, player. Are you ever jealous about sharing your sweetheart with America? Well, uh, I wouldn't say I'm jealous, but I know that someone so popular and honest can draw the wrong kind of attention. There really? are plenty of people who would love to put an end to her career, so it's not easy. I'm gonna take one more, all right? All right, this one. Let's see what you think about this. Close your eyes and rest your chin on your fist. The boxing thinker. Like these? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. There you go. What's up with me? Stand still. I'll take it again. Yeah, let me go and do that. I can't <gasps> seem to get it right. Don't move. It's a crocodile. Well, wherever. All right. So let me take this picture. Yeah. It's about there time. You go. Finally, we're all set. Wait. So, are you telling me the photos are developed? Or is that what you said <laughs> to Stone? Both. Just look. Interesting. Very interesting. Who's that guy? I know he's not a fan. You should have seen her face when she saw him. You know, I thought he'd be cocky, but he didn't seem too convinced about beating Yale. It makes sense. O'Leary's rigged the fight. Stone has to lose. That's messed up if that's the case. That's a decent picture, but it doesn't tell the truth. Huh? Of course it's the truth. I was there. Stone isn't as strong as he looks, and Moore certainly doesn't need him to lift her up. Wow. Look at his hand. Is he pulling something out of Moore's purse or putting it in? I say put it in from what I've seen. All right, uh, this one. The boxing thinker, the boxing poet. Boxing just might turn out to be the intellectual sport of choice. And this one? I think she only smokes when she's nervous. What yep. is making her nervous? The guy, bro. And that's it. The hmm. next picture. Come on. I've seen that matchbox before. I don't remember, but you know what? I trust your judgment, so. Uh, this guy. Who is he? Wait, that's him. Who? Mitchell, Mitchell, the surgeon. Mm -hmm. Seriously? <laughs> yep. We got him. Not yet. Right. We still have to find him. Mm. Hey, pal. Did you hear what I just said? We need to keep looking at all those pictures. We need a clue that'll take us to Mitchell. Hey, see? There. 
just like I was saying. Thank you for watching. This is Lover of Ladies, and I'll see you next week.